You are listening to the Fringe Radio Network. FringeRadioNetwork.com Listening to Earth Oddity, a weekly odyssey into all the oddity planet Earth has to offer. And now, serving it up are Christopher Tiny Sullivan and John Long. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a, another episode of Earth Oddity Podcast, episode 130 something. Two. 132. 132. I remember we started out last week with the number, <laughs> I just didn't remember which one it was. And thank you again for joining us on a, another odyssey into all the oddity the Earth has to offer. I myself am John, and I'm here with my good friend Tiny. Y'all remember me. And we have a huge show planned. We do. Jam-packed show. I got several good stories, but let's start off. How was your week? It was good. Good. Can't complain. Nothing exciting happened. Well, nothing that I want to talk about on the podcast. Okay. All right. Date night was fun for Tiny. All right. That's all you need to know. All right. How about you? Um, I had a fine week. It was a normal week and nothing I'll care to elaborate on on the podcast either. So Biden picked a VP. Oh, that's right. This past week. Yeah, that's right. That was big news. Ms. Uh, Kamala Harris. Is it Kamala I've always heard it pronounced okay. Kamala, but you now, be I right. could be wrong. No, I, I only watch sports news, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I was just wondering if Kamala, Kamala, I don't know. Okay. Right. Yeah. So she's going to be the vice president, if, if elected. If Biden is elected, maybe she'll just go on and be president. <laughs> right. Right you off think the he'll bat. step down like day one? <laughs> like, I can't serve. <laughs> well. I mean, even if he is up there, he may be just a figurehead. I mean. Like uh, like when Lurleen Wallace was governor of Alabama. I'm not trying to start anything, but we can I, we can all agree that he's slipping, can't we? I think so. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, and I'm not trying to be like partisan, but I, I feel like we should be able to agree on right. this. Well, let me ask you another unrelated but political question to you. Okay. Um, our governor, Kay Ivey. Right. She's gay, right? Is she? I think she is. I thought she just dressed that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, she's Republican, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I just was thinking about that this <laughs> week when I saw her speaking or something. Let's ask Google. Okay. Google knows everything. <laughs> Google's not auto-correcting. Let's see. Uh, AlabamaNews.net. Here's a headline. Governor Kay Ivey fires back against accusation regarding her sexuality. Okay. I mean, it, um, it's not a huge thing to me. She way. has spoken out against the accusation that John made just a minute ago <laughs> that she is a lesbian. So. Governor Ivy, come on the show and discuss. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no judgment on my part. You know, whatever. It's a free country. But uh, I was just thinking about that this week. I was like, she's got the haircut. You know, she's never been married. She's got the pantsuit thing going on. So why not? The, the popular belief that our governor is homosexual is mistaken. So is it mistaken? That's what she says. Okay. If this was myth bu- myth bu- Mythbusters, <laughs> I would say it was plausible. <laughs> all right? That's all I'm right. saying. It's plausible. We she, can't prove that it's not, right? Well, if she is, then she is in the closet about it. Yeah, right. And Which doesn't is appreciate her right. you outing her on no. this podcast. <laughs> certainly her right. That was talking politics with John and Tiny <laughs> and talking sexuality with John and Tiny, all in one. So some stories I have to cover this week, which are phenomenal, would be uh, that a Chinese restaurant is weighing people before they eat. Okay. okay. Now this Are they trying <laughs> to lose business? So this isn't the buffet in mine, mine and Tiny's town. No. <laughs> If you paint eyes on the back of a cow, like on the butt of a cow, right? Uh, lions are less likely to attack it. Okay. Science is amazing. Hmm. And then Amsterdam, progressive Amsterdam, has installed uh, pot plant urinals. No, urinals that are that potted plants. In. Yeah, that you can pee in. Nice. Yeah, potted plants that you can pee in on the street. 
I don't know why we don't have those here. New Orleans already has them. Oh, really? But not intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> right. But they already have them. <laughs> I have used them before. Well, I have a story about a bald eagle that attacked a drone. We're going to talk about Kanye West again. We have a we have some fun news on that. But I wanted to start with this. This comes from the BBC. U.S. calls for shower rules to be eased after Trump hair complaints. Okay. <laughs> All right. The U.S. government has proposed changing the definition of a shower head to allow increased water flow following complaints from President Donald Trump about his hair routine. <laughs> you can't need a lot of water to wash That's that what hair I'm thinking, to you. Right? I thought it like detached and then he washed it separately. <laughs> he put it in the washing machine. Yeah, right. He run it through the dishwasher or something. <laughs> yeah. Under a 1992 law, showerheads in the U.S. are not allowed to produce more than 2.5 gallons of water per minute. I didn't know that. Yeah. I just thought they don't make them like they used to. I just thought showerheads yeah. stink now. Yeah, right. I figured cheaper parts or something. But apparently that's the law. The Trump administration wants this limit to apply to each nozzle rather than the overall fixture, i.e. every little bit. Like if you have a showerhead that's got several yeah, he wants one uh, two point five gallons per per nozzle. nozzle on there. Not the whole shower head. Okay, as a whole. wow, you're gonna be <laughs> knocking some people down now. <laughs> yeah. Consumer and conservation groups argue that it is wasteful and unnecessary. The changes were proposed by the Department of Energy on Wednesday, following complaints by Mr. Trump at the White House last month. Okay, so uh, shower heads. You take a shower, the water doesn't come out. You want to wash your hands, the water doesn't come out, so what do you do? You just stand there longer, or you take a shower longer, because my hair, I don't know about you, but it has to be perfect. <laughs> perfect. His definition of perfect and my definition of perfect <laughs> is different. Right. You know? Okay. Not perfect hair. Yeah. I'm Sorry. sure he was being self-effacing then, right? Like He knows his hair is a joke, <laughs> yeah. and he's like, oh, my hair has got to be perfect, y'all. Yes. Right? <laughs> Andrew Delasky, executive director of the Energy Conservation Group Appliance Standards Awareness Project, said that the proposal was silly. With four or five more nozzles, you could have 10, 15 gallons per minute powering out of the shower head, literally probably washing you out of the bathroom. I already he said told, it. I didn't have to be in this group to know. <laughs> he, told it, he told the Associated Press News Agency, if the president needs help finding a good shower, we can point him to some great consumer websites that help you identify a good shower head that provides a dense soak in good shower. Okay. David Friedman, ex vice president of advocacy at the organization Consumer Reports, said shower heads in the U.S. already achieve high levels of consumer satisfaction while saving people money. The proposal could face court battles if it advances, Reuters News Agency reports. <laughs> okay. So, I mean... Love Donald Trump, hate Donald Trump. It would be nice to have a, a shower head with a little more pressure. <laughs> yeah, I, it? I agree with that. Yeah. Now, um, I'm not going to say who, but I do know a person that had the restrictor things removed out of their shower. So they moved <laughs> into a new house about a year ago. Um, but not everybody can do that. So right. it would be nice. When I was a kid, uh, I remember water conservation was like a big thing. Sure. You know, you hated the environment if you weren't conserving water. That's right. Is that? A real thing? Like, are we really worried about running out of water? Well, I don't, in the South, I don't think it's a huge problem. You mm -hmm. know, Alabama has more navigable waterways than any right. other state in the Union. And we have tons of lakes and tons of rivers. But out West, it's not, it ain't like that. Well, maybe you shouldn't live in the desert. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to tell you how to live your life. Right. But People if water's free to a live problem, wherever. maybe you shouldn't live in the middle of the Gobi. Oh, fascist tiny coming out, <laughs> telling people they don't have the freedom to live where they want to live. Golly. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that uh, that it's a huge problem. Water conservation is as big as a problem down here. Now, we have to worry more about pollution runoff mm -hmm. here. So, well, it's, a, you know, pesticides or whether it's gray water or whatever. We do have to worry a ton about this. Now, I'm fired up about water conservation and conservation in general because I sat through environmental science merit badge class yesterday <laughs> with my son, Hudson. So I know all about it. Okay. And Hudson has made a commitment to take cold showers from here on out to use really? less energy. That's right. Huh. Yeah. What are you doing to help the planet, Tiny? 
Uh, well, I tell you what, I'll shop at Aldi and reuse my bags. <laughs> Unlike okay. some people. I reuse all my bags, too. <laughs> okay. I, I, what do you think I put in my bath trash can? My bathroom <laughs> trash can. Walmart bags. Well, how often are you changing out your bathroom once trash? Once a week. If you need 50. Once a week. 50 bags. Yeah, once a week. <laughs> once I use week. them for other things like cat litter. Okay. Um, to put dirty clothes in when we go camping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, well, what about when the dirty when you're done with a bag for dirty clothes? What then it goes then? back into the pile <laughs> to get used for the bath trash can. Yeah. How many bags do you think you have on hand right now? I would say probably 150. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not too bad. Huh. Yeah. I could run through those in like a month, probably. Yeah. How many plastic bags I have at my house? How many? I have somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 reusable cloth bags. Mm-hmm. Zero plastic bags. Okay, just saying. Good. What do you put in your bath trash can? We, I put it in the can. I just, uh, I, I dump just it in the big in? trash. Right. Yeah. And it all just comes out. I mean, let's just say there's some products that your wife <laughs> may or may not use that have, you know, like she has a way of wrapping need, them up inside uh, the packaging. I would say you might, so don't, that, you might want to, <laughs> you might want to hose that trash can out every now and then. Is we all have I'm a saying. can of Lysol. Okay. All right. You're one of the few people in the world today who has a can. Sick brag. Tiny, low in the income bracket, worse than above all of us. He's got Lysol to spray in his trash cans. Yes. Yeah, yes, I'm so rich. I've got my can of Lysol and and great value blue corn chips. That's right. Wow. I guess if you shop at Aldi, you got a lot of disposable income for stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. Well, living in my 1,100 square foot house, (laughs) eating my blue corn chips. We did talk a lot yesterday. This has nothing to do with anything we did talk about, about how the smoky bear, only you can start forest fires, Mm -hmm. have really been detrimental to the West (laughs) because they stopped doing like control burns and stuff out there. And now they're having like raging wildfires. Right. And in the South, we manage our forests largely with through control burns. So we don't have near the wildfires they do. Now, every once in a while, one will crop up like the one that took out, not Dollywood, but Pigeon Forge and all that last year or a couple of years back. Yeah. A couple of years back, we also had one in uh, Bankhead. Mm-hmm. Now, yes. I got it out. But right. Well, yeah. I actually went on a camping trip while that fire was burning. Yeah. I've, I've, we just didn't get close to it. Yeah. Right. So if you're not yeah. close to it, you're fine. And yeah. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. We had a group of firefighters walk by. Yeah. And we offered them some water. My buddy's dad, when he was in college, my buddy's dad's a forester. When he was in college, they would work in the summer out west fighting forest fires. And he said that a lot of times they would get them contained Mm -hmm. and then let them burn for a few days. So they'd make like an extra three or four days of hazard pay. (laughs) (laughs) It was like we'd just sit around and drink beer and watch the fire. (laughs) You know, it's like then we finally put it all out and go back into base camp. So. I listened to an episode of Stuff You Should Know where they talked about firefighters. Oh, yeah? And they said that there are certain species of uh, pine tree where the cones are actually – something about when they're, when a fire burns through, they actually right. – they open up, they crack open and seed the ground after fires. Right. Yes, that's true. You and know. pine trees have – their bark's naturally defensive against fires, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Now, you may have not known this. We have more species of oak trees in Alabama than any other state. And we have a ton of pine trees in Alabama. One of I didn't. Know I think our a- largest <laughs> agricultural business is timber in Alabama. I did know we have a lot of pine trees, right. and their bark is specifically made. You know, it's real thick and it flakes off, so another layer can grow mm-hmm. if there is a fire. So there you go. And that's talking environmental science with John and Tiny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's move on to another environmental science type story, and that is. If you paint eyes on the butts of cattle, um, it can protect them from lions, research show. Hmm. Now, the picture here is amazing because those are some very detailed eyes. They are. Yeah. I mean, like, they got their mascara done and everything. (laughs) That was like Bob Ross. Yeah. Check out the link (laughs) so you can see this. This is from sciencealert.com. The predation of livestock by carnivores and the retaliatory killing of carnivores as a result is a major global conservation challenge. Such human wildlife conflicts are a key driver of large carnivore declines and the cost of coexistence are often disproportionately borne by rural, rural communities in the global south. So these are our global southern brothers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
While current approaches tend to focus on separating livestock from wild carnivores, for instance, through fencing or legal lethal control, this is not always possible or desirable. When you say through fencing, does that mean that they're hiring fencers yes, to with stand swords. out there and yes, protect with the cows from the lines? Or the other definition of fencing, which is thieving and selling. Uh, <laughs> they could be doing it too, stealing lines and selling them to Joe Exotic. <laughs> Alternative and effective non-lethal tools that protect both large carnivores and the livelihoods of farmers are urgently needed. So a new study we describe in a new study we describe how painting eyes on the backside of livestock can protect them from attack. Mm-hmm. Many big cats, including lions, leopards, and tigers, are ambush predators. This means that they rely on stalking their prey and retaining the element of surprise. In some cases, being seen by their prey can lead them to abandon the hunt. We tested whether we could hack into this response to reduce livestock issues to lions and leopards uh, in Botswana. This delta, which is like the Akvangno Delta region in northwest Botswana, has permanent marshlands and seasonally flooded plains, which host a wide variety of wildlife. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and parts of the delta are protected. However, though livestock are excluded, the cordon fence is primarily intended to prevent contact and disease transmission between cattle and Cape Buffalo. So there's been a conflict between farmers and wildlife for forever, really all over the globe. This is that's <laughs> right. not, not, this is not new. Yeah, not new to Botswana. Uh, livestock rub shoulders with lions, leopards, spotted hyenas, cheetahs, and African wild dogs. To protect the cattle herds, anything between about six cattle and 100 individual cattle are kept within predator-proof enclosures overnight. However, they generally graze unattended for most of the day when the vast majority of predation occurs. Um, Before release from their overnight enclosure, we painted about one-third of each herd with an artificial eye spot design on the rump, one-third with a simple cross marks, and left the remaining third of the herd unmarked. We carried out 49 painting sessions, and each of these lasted for 24 days. The cattle were also collared and all foraged in the same area and moved similarly, suggesting they were exposed to similar risk. However, the individuals painted with artificial eye spots were significantly more likely to survive than unpainted or cross-painted control cattle within the same herd. In fact, none of the 683 painted eye cows were killed by ambush predators during the four-year study, while 15 unpainted and four cross-painted cattle were killed. Uh, the results supported our initial hunt, that hunch that creating the perception that the predator had been seen by the prey would lead it to abandon the hunt. Hmm. So, said all that to say... Lions are stupid. Yeah, lions are incredibly dumb. Like king of the jungle, my butt. You know, yeah. my goodness, bad look for the lions. That makes a lot of sense because I remember my first theory was just lions could read. Yeah. And Chick-fil-A's aggressive ad campaign had convinced them <laughs> to eat more chicken. There you go. But there no, you go. But I remember when I was a kid, I remember there being an article in – uh, maybe Highlights Magazine, one of those kids, one of those magazines we used to read. Weekly we Reader, kids, Highlights, something. yeah. Maybe yeah. even zoo books, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but it was people who would work out in the jungle. Yeah, would wear, they would wear a Halloween mask yeah, on the backer. back of their head. Yes. And yeah. and the the tigers that lived in the jungle wouldn't attack them because right. they're stupid. Yeah, and they th- thought they were being seen. Yeah, if the tiger was like, oh, man, yeah, I, I really want to attack that guy and drag <laughs> him off back to my pride or whatever. Right. But I'm just a tiger. I'm too stupid. I don't know which one of his faces is the real one. The tiger's like, I would really like to lunge my 400-pound <laughs> muscle-filled body at this 150-pound villager. But <laughs> I, he's looking at me. I can't do it. You know? I mean, all these workers strangely have a William Shatner face on the back <laughs> of their head. And I don't want to tangle with two-headed William Shatner. So I guess I'll just crouch here in the grass and, and hope they don't come after me. It Maybe. don't matter. I can see him chopping down the tree from the and, other and he direction. Never does anything? I'm just a tiger. I'm stupid. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe the tigers hate Star Trek. <laughs> Maybe you know it could be. Um, I join them in that sentiment. Sentiment, <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. I would say, though, that since having an eyeball tattooed on my butt, my <laughs> wife has not attacked it. <laughs> so I feel like the science really proves itself here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big cats are dumb. I guess so. You would think, though. Could you what? Could you do this to like a house cat? You got a house cat. I do have a house cat. Can you uh, put a, a mask on the back or paint? You need to paint an eye. On uh, Jay Barker's butt, and <laughs> see if see what the cat does. Well, the cat and Jay Barker they live in peace. Okay. Yeah. Now, if Julius was still here, we could try it with any of us because <laughs> Julius was uh, he was a killer. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, Julius the Wonder Cat, the greatest cat that ever lived, <laughs> was a stone cold killer, and didn't matter that he didn't have claws in his front paws because we rudely had them removed. Before we do, that was not kosher to do. Right. But we loved our couch more than we loved our cat, apparently. <laughs> and he was tearing our couch up. <laughs> but he was still, he, I mean, that cat was, he was something else. Mm-hmm. And people were like, oh, you know, my cat's, you know, mean or whatever. And I would just be like, oh, Julius will kill your cat. Like, <laughs> he he does not care. He's, do you think that would have fooled Julius? Or do you think he would have seen I, through the roof? Well, see, I think Julius was actually pretty smart because it mm-hmm. took him about a week to figure out that his claws in the front didn't work. Mm-hmm. And so when I, I'm Julius and I fought every day, <laughs> every day. He loved fighting. I mean, he would, I was, he, you can ask my wife, he loved me more than anybody else. And we fought every day. <laughs> and after about the first week, when he figured out, well, I'm hitting him with my front paws and it's not slowing him down any. He would grab my arm with his front paws, lock in, bite my arm, and then scratch me with his back feet on my arm. <laughs> and that was his like number one mode of attack. He would run and jump at me like that and then attack me. So Julius, I don't I don't think it would have fooled him. I imagine Julius getting booked on a speaking tour <laughs> overseas <laughs> where he just shows up and he's telling all these tigers and lions, you idiots. Yeah. It's a plastic. It's not real. <laughs> Man, I miss Julius. I'm now sad because I'm thinking about him. <laughs> Built him an Indian mound, by mm-hmm. the way, you know, or Native American yes. burial mound. I don't know if I've ever told you that. You've mentioned it. Yeah. It's about about six feet tall. Nice. By the way. Yeah. And in Moundville, no less. Well, close to it. <laughs> yeah. It's behind our old house. Those people we sold it to are selling that house now, too. I want to go dig up Julius's bones and move him to my property. <laughs> you know, let's like, do it. If they move out and leave the house unattended, I promise you I will. <laughs> Nice. He doesn't need to be around strangers. <laughs> that cat was, I know why Egyptians worship cats. You know, like if you have a cat like that, that right. will protect you from harm. Well, John, I know how to cheer you up. Okay. this is Now, this is something that never fails to cheer you up. It's okay. Kanye. Okay. Love Kanye. <laughs> we're going to talk about Kanye. Kanye, or, we're, we're, <laughs> we're tight. Hey, Jacqueline, if you're listening, the skip button is right there beside the play <laughs> button if you just want to skip over this. So Jacqueline's anti-Kanye? Well, I, she's definitely anti people voting for Kanye. Oh, okay. But you know me. I mean, I'm one of those people who wants to watch the world burn. <laughs> the Jacqueline, I say go for it. Jacqueline doesn't like Trump as much as any American I've ever met. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. He's like, you don't even. He's not even in your country. What? Well, I mean, maybe this is just American politics, but like Justin Trudeau. I don't know anything about Justin Trudeau. I have I don't, I no know opinion he, on him. I know he wore blackface one time. That's Brown the only thing I know. All right. <laughs> What's the difference? He was was it a genie? He was dressed as a genie at was a party. He? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like we're American. I don't pay <laughs> yeah. attention to other countries' <laughs> politics. I don't know what's going on. But like Trump is universally hated. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody hates our president. Mm-hmm. Generally, every president we've ever had, yeah, the rest of the say, world's There's hated. not a single president. Yeah. Every president has his base of yeah. people who love him. Everybody else hates right. him. I mean, people forget they were burning effigies of Barack Obama in the streets over in the Middle East, too. You <laughs> right. know? Like, yes. I mean, he committed some war crimes himself, <laughs> all right? But we forget that. But anyway, uh, this comes from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Kanye West campaign says that he belongs on the ballot even if his nomination papers were late. Okay. The fate of Kanye West presidential campaign in Wisconsin may be coming down to a matter of crucial moments. West campaign is arguing that he belongs on the presidential ballot in Wisconsin even if his campaign turned in his nomination signatures. Let me just ask you this, okay? 5 p.m. on August 4th was the deadline. Mm-hmm. What time do you think he turned his in? Um... 8 a.m. the next day. 5 o'clock and 14 seconds. Oh, for real? 
<laughs> he was no, he was fourteen seconds late. It doesn't count until it clicks over to five oh one. You know? <laughs> It doesn't count until it clicks. I'm with Kanye on this. I'm so glad you said that because that's precisely what his lawyers right. are arguing. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not a whole minute and went by. Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, they're they're nah. That, they're trying to get. This well, is voter hey, suppression this right is, here. This is Wisconsin. Right. They went red. Sure. In 2016. That's right. And yeah. they they don't want that to go happen again. <laughs> that's what's going on. It's a deep state that want Kanye <laughs> on the ballot. The 23-page document filed Monday says that a state elections commission staffer told a West campaign aide that she turned in the nomination papers 14 seconds oh. after the deadline. State so law. it's on the state. <laughs> that ain't on Kanye, right? Right. Yeah. State law says the papers had to have been filed by not later than 5 p.m. Mm. The air, air quotes around not later. Yeah. The statutory provision does not distinguish between minutes and seconds. Okay. Lawyer Michael Curran of Spring Green said in the filing, for the average observer arriving before 501 is arriving not later than 5 p.m. The phrase not later is particularly instructive in that it indicates the presumption that the seconds from 5 o'clock to 5 o'clock and 59 seconds are inclusive to 5 p.m. There we go. <laughs> I agree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> the statute states 5 p.m. for something to be filed later than 5 p.m. It would have to have been filed at 5.01. Yeah. So we're getting into the semantics of. I agree. <laughs> yes. Like I, I, people being late is one of my pet peeves. Right. All right. But if you're told to clock in at 10 a.m., you got till 10.01 before you're officially <laughs> late. Everybody knows that. That's universal. Everybody yes. knows that. Beyond that, Kieran argued that the nomination papers should count even if his campaign was late. He said that West Team was hindered by state election officials mm -hmm. who locked their agency's doors and an overly aggressive media and Democratic operative. Oh, no. Even assuming filing was not timely to begin with, the commission should find that the nomination paperwork was timely filed here due to the locking of the commission's doors, as well as the interference of the media and a rival campaign. Wow. <laughs> wow. Officials with the state Democratic Party declined to respond to his, his well, filing. See, what I would say is I had it in the hands of the state before 5 p.m. <laughs> right. And you guys dropped the ball on this, so y'all got to take the hit on it. <laughs> yes. You know, y'all, your clerk has to file this paperwork for me. Mm -hmm. I can't come behind the counter and do it myself. So this is on y'all. Right. You know, and I wasn't at 501. I was 14 seconds past when she actually put it in. And then also here it says that the challenges also suggest there are numerous problems with his nomination papers. Okay. Including incorrect addresses for circ was that uh circulators? I guess that's uh I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But also bonus signatures such as Mickey Mouse and Bernie Sanders. <laughs> okay. You telling me you can prove Mickey didn't sign it? <laughs> you know? Well, once again. And that's what his lawyers are, are demanding. They're like, prove that Mickey Mouse yeah. and Bernie Sanders didn't sign this. I mean, Mickey, I mean, he probably resides in Florida, <laughs> so that might be a problem. <laughs> but you gonna have to show me. He he might have a he might have a summer home. Yeah, yeah. He goes <laughs> north Wisconsin, for the summer. Yes. Yeah. He's okay. got a lot of money. He's probably got houses Ooh. in every state. Yeah, Mickey. You talk about <laughs> the rich, richest people in the world. Mickey Mouse is up there. <laughs> I mean, I would just, I would love, uh, Bernie Sanders, yeah, he probably didn't sign it. Yeah, I don't know. I could see Bernie supporting <laughs> Kanye. <laughs> but Mickey Mouse being like, how dare you? I love Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good Mickey impression you got, you know? Well, I've watched a lot of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Okay. So. <laughs> All right, it's a surprise tool we'll use later. So we'll just have to see uh, what happens, but as of now... He is. He's on the ballot in what state was it? Colorado, maybe. <sighs> I feel like Colorado just let everybody on. They're all out there stoned, anyways. <laughs> yeah. They don't care. You know, they're like, right. look, we don't, we barely even got to collect taxes for selling so much weed. But maybe I don't know. He may or may not be on the ballot in Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, I wish him the best. You know, <laughs> like to me, 
If he's on the ballot in Alabama, which I doubt he will be, but I'm absolutely voting for him. <laughs> oh, you can care. I guarantee I you. I'll tell videotape my grandchildren myself. one day right. I voted for Kanye West. I'll videotape myself <laughs> voting for him. And I don't think you can actually video or take pictures in a polling place, you know? I don't know. Well, now sure. I know that I know. Okay, this guy is in California, but yeah. in 2016 there was a guy who posted a picture of his ballot because he wrote in his mom. Okay, he wanted to to show everyone. Hey, I wrote in my mom. Right. So. Yeah. So maybe you can. I don't know. Maybe I made that up. I make a lot of things up and present <laughs> them as fact. It's really how I win arguments with my wife. But yeah, I, I hope Kanye gets on the ballot. Let's move on to Amsterdam. Everybody, speaking of smoking pot, right? <laughs> right. Everybody loves Amsterdam. Um, have you ever been to Amsterdam? Never been to Amsterdam. Me neither. I have known my whole life that I should steer clear of Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. like you got to know your limits. <laughs> and that is a place where I would end up either dead or in some sort of like international controversy. <laughs> I just need to stay away from Amsterdam. <laughs> so Mind Your Peas is the headline here from Dutch News. Amsterdam installs plant pot street urinals to improve toilet manners. It erodes historic walls, creates a stench, and may even le- may even lead to the deaths of several young men a year who try to use the canal late at night. For real? Yeah. So now Amsterdam is trying to make wild plassen, which is urinating outdoors, better for humans and for the environment by investing in a set of green pea urinals. Mm. Green pea being the, I guess, assume trademarked name for these. Now, are these plants that can live with a that, that, high acidic yes. soil? I guess. I don't know if your pea is acidic or not. I've never done a pH test on it. Well, now I do know that if you pee outside in the same place, yeah, over, no, it'll over and over brown and your grass up. Your grass. Yeah, no, straight up. I've been... <laughs> Drawing you my name, it around. been drawing my name in my neighbor's yard for about two months now. It's finally starting to work. Uh, from Friday evening, late night drinkers in the red light district uh, will be able to use twelve new facilities, which are plant pots during the day and urinals at night. The urine will be harvested for its phosphates and recycled as clean water, while the hardy plants are fed only by rainwater thanks to a reservoir and a series of wicks inside the soil. My ambition is to place these in different cities and carry on innovating. Richard DeVeers, inventor of green pea, told Dutch News, We can make electricity with urine, and it would be good if it could power a light. Maybe it could be a city announcement board for public health messages, too. Now, how do you make electricity with urine? I'm no scientist. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know either. It Unless, seems like if we could do that, right? it seems like that would really be good for the world. I have saw a funny urinal picture that had like a little turbine in there, and it was like aim here, and it would spin <laughs> the turbine. There was like a light bulb above the thing. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, that's not practical because the splash factor is right. going to be too much coming mm-hmm. off of a spinning tur- turbine. So turbine. Turbine is, you don't want to be peeing on turbines, okay? <laughs> That's racist if you're turbine. doing that. Turbine. Turbine, yeah. If you, if everyone <laughs> pulled their urine, okay. <laughs> pardon yeah. the pun, yeah. you could uh, run it through a turbine then. Yeah. And tur- that might do something. Sure. Probably not much, because. I don't know. I don't know either. Okay. Well, he goes on to say, if you want a solution to wild peeing, wild peeing is Tiny Spanish. <laughs> yeah. uh, cities try to create ownership and a feeling that someone is watching you, he said. That works, but the need for peeing stays. That's very true. Mm-hmm. Um, we came up with the idea of a planner to help green the city, have something that looks nicer, but is also a urinal. It's also circular as we make fertilizer from the urine and also green water. Four models were temporarily temporarily placed in and around the uh, Rambustplein. That's the red light district. Oh, I know that. Yeah, last year. And an independent su- study suggested on one street, the uh, public urination decreased by 49%. So pretty much cut public plea in, in half, <laughs> which is nice. All right. A study showed that green peas don't create smell problems. And we will monitor whether that continues to be the case, said Amsterdam City in a press release. The new green peas have also been further developed and improved in terms of sustainability, user privacy, recognition, and discoverability. Which I would say privacy probably 
your main concern mm-hmm. here. A single unit cost four thousand. I'm going to say pounds because I don't know what they use euros. Maybe euros. Maybe. Let's just say euros. I think they all use euros. Uh, and doubles. All right. Oh, a single unit costs four thousand euros, and doubles cost five thousand euros. Uh, and their ongoing maintenance costs for collecting the urine, cleaning it, and delivering fertilizer for local green products. So, anyways. If it works as good as the article yeah. makes it sound, then this is great. Let's roll them out for football season in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> Let's get them. People pee on the street in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> I mean, we like to act like it don't happen here, but mm-hmm. I have peed on the street in Tuscaloosa <laughs> after a game. Really, not even after a game, just after a night out. So, right. Yeah. Um, I think it sounds like a great idea. And if you can do something useful with it, then that's even better. Can women use these green pea urinals? From the pictures in the article, it does not appear to be set up for women. Okay, well, I see that tough. being a problem. Yeah, that's a... That's going to get some complaints. That's a tough one. But can't they use the... Isn't there a pea funnel? I've seen on Wish.com <laughs> a, an attachment you could use. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm in the dark on the plumbing situation for women. <laughs> you know? Right. I mean... I got the general gist of it now. I know what I need to know, you know, for my own personal uses. I had a set of world books <laughs> okay. when I was a kid. Yeah. But everything else, I mean, like, I don't I don't know about any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's going to be a little tougher for women. But I've seen women peeing outside, too. You got to go, you got to go. Yeah. I mean, that's, it doesn't matter if there's a law against it or not. So, ladies, just let us have this one, please. Yeah, I mean, really, yeah. Just give us this one. Well, uh. You know, I mean, if you will let us pee outside into into planners like this, then that really opens up the bathroom capacity for you. You know, right. like y'all can go to the men's room. Mm-hmm. We just turn that into a ladies' room too. We'll have one stall for number two. Yeah. Well, men. Yeah. Could use it if could. they had to. John gonna, will never use it. No, that reminds me. <laughs> I got a story about that. I tell, but uh. Yeah, you don't. If you're out on in the red light district <laughs> in Amsterdam, you don't want to have to go number two. <laughs> there has been something that's definitely happened there. All right. Well, this is going to be my last story here, and uh, thanks to Miss Jane Updegraff for posting this in the group. Bald eagle attacks state's nine hundred and fifty dollar drone and sends it to the bottom of Lake Michigan. There we go, USA, <laughs> yes. USA, USA. <laughs> In what state officials are describing as a brazen attack, a bald eagle recently snatched a $950 drone. Let's just round up a $1,000 drone belonging to the state of Michigan that was being flown to document shoreline erosion damage in the Upper Peninsula. After a brief tussle, the big bird ripped off one of the propellers from the small spinning aircraft and sent it to the bottom of Lake Michigan. The drone was being operated by a pilot from the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy, which <laughs> the uh, the acronym for that is EGLE. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> when the July 21st attack occurred, is the department's acronym a coincidence when considering the predator? The state thinks not. The attack could have been a territorial squabble with the electronic foe or just a hungry eagle. Or maybe it did not like its name being misspelled. Yeah. Or maybe you're really in cahoots with the Russians. You're all spies. <laughs> That's right. And this eagle was doing the eagle, his <laughs> patriotic duty. Eagles against Ill- illegal surveillance is what he is. <laughs> yes. You know? You are per- permission to film the coastline. <laughs> there are people living there, I'm sure. Uh, the EGLE quality analyst and drone pilot Hunter King was on his fourth mapping run of the day with the drone, capturing images of shoreline erosion so that the state agency can document how recent high water levels have affected the Great Lakes and give them data on which communities need help coping with the damage. The pilot said the drone was about seven minutes into its mapping flight when he noticed that its satellite reception was getting weak. He pressed the go home recall button. The drone dutifully turned, reacquired a strong satellite feed. Then King was watching his video screen as the drone beelined for home, but suddenly it began twirling furiously like a bad roller coaster ride. (laughs) Why hasn't he posted this footage? I know, that's what I would like to see. We need to see this. When he looked up, the drone was gone and an eagle was flying away. 
A nearby couple later confirmed they saw the eagle strike something, but were surprised to learn that it was a drone. Both King and the couple said the eagle appeared uninjured as it flew from the scene of the crime. King and the couple all searched for the drone, but they found nothing. Flight data showed that the drone had hit the lake about 150 feet from the shore and landed in four feet of water. Employees used the information days later when they returned to search for the aircraft. So they just left it there that day? Yeah, they just left it there that day. I don't piss that eagle off anymore, <laughs> you know? Said that uh, UGLE Unmanned Aircraft Systems Coordinator, author Asta Ostoswayski. Sure. I'm, I'm trying, y'all. <laughs> brought a kayak and snorkeling gear to the search with near zero visibility in the water. He scrapped the snorkel and instead walked a grid pattern, shuffling his feet for two hours in soft mud. He too was luckless and he abandoned the search when lightning began to accom- accompany a cold drizzle. Oh. So they never found it. Uh, it goes on to say what it was. I mean, it was not, I mean, it's a thousand dollar drone. Yeah. That'll get you a pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, it ain't like one you buy down at Walmart, I'm sure. <laughs> no. And it just, it goes on to say that Eagles have enjoyed a nice up, uptick in this area of Michigan. Yeah. And, you know, don't be, don't be flying your drones around for, the Kremlin. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I applaud this eagle. Yeah. You know? It embodies the American spirit, really. <laughs> I'm proud of it. And it makes me proud to be an American. I feel don't, like Lee Greenwood on July 4th. Don't tread on me. Yeah, don't <laughs> tread on me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, good for the eagle. You know, take that, Michigan Department of whatever you were i've already forgotten in the three minutes tiny was reading yeah yeah take that which eagles have made a comeback all over really you know yeah they're doing great you see them around here every once in a while Mm -hmm. you keep your eyes open did you see that uh picture i posted on instagram on july 4th i came home and there was a hulk yes on my front porch yeah Yeah. just hawks have really made a comeback too. it's like it was i mean it looked me right in the eyes yeah it was like I want you to know, Tony, that I respect you. I respect your struggle. <laughs> You're doing all right. And then he uh, he like pointed at me with his wing, and then he flew off. Okay, there you yeah. go. I mean, I that's don't, the message I took from. Yeah, it. I don't want to brag, Tony, because <laughs> I don't want to like steal your shine. <laughs> but once when we were at the backyard of the old house, a hawk caught a squirrel and ate it on the roof of my house in front of me and my kids. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, we watched it, and mm-hmm. I was like, look, kids, it's a circle of life, you know? Yeah. Just know that if you're better armed and have uh, air superiority, you normally win the match. So, <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, let's move on to my last and final story, too. A China restaurant apologizes for weighing customers. <laughs> Now, this isn't a Chinese restaurant in Tuscaloosa. No, this is in China. I was going to say, they're going to need some heavy-duty scales. (laughs) You're going to have to to break out a cotton scale for us, you know? (laughs) (laughs) You're going to be weighing me. Um, Like that one they used on The Biggest Loser or something. That's right. That's right. (laughs) Which, speaking of which, my boss is like, hey, I tell you what, John, I will pay for a gym membership for me and you, and we can go work out. You know, he's like, because I think being we need both need to be physically fit. Now, Shane's not overweight in any way. Right. You know, I think he was just saying, like, hey, buddy, you're getting a little chub chub here. <laughs> you're like second in command you're of this company. You're the face company. of this company. <laughs> you're second in command of this company. I don't need you falling over dead one day. And I was like, no, nah, you know, let me think about that. I'll get back to you. And I just haven't brought it up since then. <laughs> Tell him you're gonna, uh, your buddy Tiny's going to need one, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to go work out every day. That's why I'm fat. You know? <laughs> Anyways, a restaurant in central China has apologized for encouraging diners to weigh themselves and then order food accordingly. (laughs) But Chinese don't play around. You know, they'll just straight up hurt your feelings. Well, you know, if I'm trying to sell food, you know, and I'm the business owner, I don't care how much you weigh or what you look like. I just want to sell you some wontons, (laughs) you know? The policy was introduced after a national campaign against food waste was launched. Now, food waste, huge problem, it especially in the, in the United States. So uh, the beef restaurant in the city of Changsha placed two large scales at its entrance this week. Just imagine the outrage. <laughs> like Facebook would blow up. Well, if it was for men only, it would be funny. Yeah, Everybody true. would love it. But yeah. the minute women starts getting up on there, it's going to be an outrage. 
Which I did tell Shay my fitness goal was to be able to shop at Walmart without being on one of those carts. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and so far, I'm, I'm doing pretty good on that. Uh, it then asked diners to enter their measurements into an app that would suggest menu items accordingly. Signs reading, be thrifty and diligent, promote empty plates, and operation empty plate were pinned up. Uh, the policy caused uproar on Chinese social media. I bet you Chinese social media is a wild time, you know. <laughs> right. Well, if you can, if you can get past the all the, the firewalls, firewall, yeah. if you can get uh, like the dark area, yeah. of Chinese social media. It's probably a good time. <laughs> Hashtags about the restaurant have been viewed more than three hundred million times on the social platform Weibo. The restaurant says it's deeply sorry for its interpretation of the National Clean Plate campaign. <laughs> Our original intention was to advocate stopping waste and ordering food in a healthy way. We never forced customers to weigh themselves, it said in an apology posted online. Now, President Z, Z? is that Z? I think, Z? I think it's Z. Z? President Z. Ignited the campaign this week, calling for levels of national food wastage, uh, calling the levels of national food wastage shocking and distressing. Mm -hmm. So following Xi's message, the Wuhan Catering Industry Association, I will not be using the Wuhan <laughs> Catering Association. <laughs> We're just going to be the WCA. <laughs> yeah. Urged restaurants in the city to limit the number of dishes served to diners, implementing a system where groups have to order one dish fewer than the number of diners. Uh, State TV also criticized live streamers who filmed themselves eating large amounts of food. And there you go. That's hmm. the end of the article. China doesn't want to turn into like fat America. <laughs> you know, we're all overweight. And so I don't hate the idea, you know, but it would never go over here. No. If you think people don't want to wear a mask, tell them they got to get on a steak <laughs> on, on a scale before they go to like Ryan's buffet or something. Yeah. yeah. But your Ryan's still a thing. I mean, I don't know. Ours it's is not closed, here. Right? Yeah, ours yeah. is closed down. Um, but used to, Ryan's used to be the spot when I was real little. Or really, Qu Quincy's used to be the spot when I was real little. I remember Barney Hills. I remember Barney Hills. My grandfather, yeah. God rest his soul, he loved yeah. Barney Hills. Deidre's grandfather would take all of us, the whole family, to Quincy's when he'd get his farm check every year. <laughs> that was our big dinner out. You, know, you get whatever you want off the buffet. Well, uh, then the big fat yeast big rolls. Big fat yeast rolls. Man, those were yes, good. they were good. <laughs> they were so good. I would kill for one right now. <laughs> Man, I want to go to Quincy's. Man. Yeah. But so uh, I, I don't know that the large buffet industry hasn't just faded out. I mean, what could go wrong with thousands of Americans <laughs> shoving their hands into dishes that we're all communally sharing? I was about to say, I don't think there are. Are there any? I don't know. There may be. I like, can't think of the last time I saw one. Uh, there was a. <laughs> there was Buffet City. Yeah. Now, <laughs> there's Chinese buffet. The Chinese buffet. There may be a few of those around. Yeah. Is the one in Northport still there? Okay. Yeah. The it's one over open. in front of uh, my now. Taco Bell and all that. It's, yeah. it's going to It's got to close it's, down, I'm right? Sure. Because yeah. people don't want to do I mean, mm -hmm. people have finally realized, like, I don't need to be sharing, you know, the same utensils mm -hmm. as the guy with coronavirus yeah. has. Because I might catch a cold. That, yeah. Yeah. Could kill my grandpa, but I'll probably right. be okay. And that's nothing about Chinese people before somebody gets mad and <laughs> calls in. We're talking about buffets right. in general. Yeah. Yeah. The buffet concept, I think, is going by the wayside. Mm -hmm. I don't know, though. Maybe we bring it back. I don't want to go in the restaurant, but stop me before I <laughs> try to do this again. I've already lost all my money once. There's a show that is on Hulu. It's called 112263. Okay. Have you ever heard of it? Never heard of it's it. It's been around a while. It's about four years old, but it is good. It okay. is an eight-episode miniseries about a guy, James Franco. I know James Franco. He finds a portal that goes back to 1960. Okay. And he wants to prevent JFK's assassination, but he has to live there for you know three or four years or so. Right. Yeah, you know, because it doesn't it doesn't go to that point. Right. So he's just got to blend in and live there. And I just remember. In the show, when he gets there, like the first time he orders a burger at a diner, he's just like, oh, so good. You know, the food <laughs> yeah, right. is just so much better in the 1960s sure. before we were all health conscious. And, 
and using yeah low fat, low salt, low whatever. or frozen <laughs> yes. hamburger patties and all that. Yeah, artificial flavoring and all this stuff. Yeah, Betty didn't talk about how McDonald's fries were worse. No, and you because McDonald's see, fries have always been good. You don't even see a McDonald's in the show. Okay, so. all right, four or five guys. I bet. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. As I say, uh, Five Guys didn't exist back then. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they couldn't have. Well, all this buffet talk has made me a little hungry. And you know what that means, right, Tiny? What does it mean? It means we're going to talk about world-famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spots. And we want to thank them for their support. And everything they've done for us. We love Cajun Curl. Our listeners love Cajun Curl. So people were talking about it in the pa- in the uh, Discord this they week. Were. Gotta say, Discord, been a little slow, you know, <laughs> uh, for most of this week. But they did get fired up about Cajun Curl. Check them out at their website, CajunCurl.com. On the website there, you can order their spice and the cutter for potatoes all on CajunCurl.com. It was created on the Elm Bayou in Evangeline Parish, Louisiana, and it's a seasoning that goes on everything. If you like cooking or eating, this is a spice for you. Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice goes well on chicken, beef, pork, potatoes, popcorn. Shout out to the Discord. They talked about that. Mm -hmm. And anything else you can think of putting it on. The spiral potato cutter is absolutely amazing. It's easy to use, it's easy to clean, and it will allow you to make your own chips using the Cajun Curl Spice. If you want to turn your next cookout or tailgate up a notch, imagine whipping up a batch of homemade potato chips. Your next-door neighbor isn't going to be able to top that. They're going to be over there trying to open up their bag (laughs) of Lay's or Golden Flakes, and you're rolling in with some homemade potato chips. Just big hat and everybody in your group. You're yeah. Like, oh, wow. Oh, so you bought yours at the store. I made mine at home. You sprinkle the Cajun Curl Spice on there, and it'll change your life, change your neighbor's life. You're going to elevate your social status. There's really no downside here. On the website, CajunCurl.com, you can not only order the original Bayou Blended Spice and the, Ch- and the Cajun Curl Chip Cutter as well, but you'll also find recipes that are absolutely mind-blowing. You can locate your nearest retailer or order your own. If your local grocer doesn't carry world-famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice, ask them to start stocking it now. Now, here locally in Tuscaloosa and Northport, it's available at Bowles Fresh Market on Skyland Boulevard, South's Finest Meat, Mark Smart in downtown Northport, and Piggly Wiggly on Lurleen Wallace Boulevard in Northport as well. All of their products are made in the USA, so not only do you enjoy the taste of Cajun Curl, but you also feel like a bald eagle attacking a drone, a state-owned drone, while you enjoy your meal. It's all natural, it's low salt, and it has a little kick to it, but it doesn't burn your lips. World-famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice. Taste the spice, but not the heat. Check them out at CajunCurl.com and use our promo code EOP10, that's EOP and the number 10, to get a 10% discount. Because we ask that you use the spice, but we don't ask you to pay full price. That's right. All right, John, what do you say we go to the phones? Let's go to the phones. We got Psych. phone calls? No, we really don't. <laughs> no, we do. Oh, dang. <laughs> I was going to be like, my feelings were going to be hurt if we went two weeks without that any phone calls. That was a double psych right okay. there. <laughs> well, you got me. Uh, we got a phone call from our friend and your sister, yes. Jacqueline. All right. Hey, guys, it's Jacqueline. Uh, sorry I didn't call in last week. Um, I was incredibly busy. But I'm calling in now, even though I'm still incredibly busy, because I don't want to hear you guys talk about football for another 10 to 15 minutes. No offense. Uh, well, maybe some offense, but oh my God, football is so boring. All right, pause this call. <laughs> pause this call. There we go. Look, Jacqueline. <laughs> There are things that are important to some of us that aren't important to other people, right? (laughs) And sometimes you just have to sit through those. (laughs) I sat through like three hours of my wife watching some show on Netflix yesterday that I had no clue what was going on. She never attempted to even tell me what was going on. And I just let her do it because it was important to her. What was it? Some rainbow something. I don't know. It was on Umbrella, mm-hmm. Rainbow Umbrella. I don't know. The what. Umbrella Academy? Maybe. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> I really don't. But it's on Netflix. I haven't seen the Umbrella Academy, but I'm curious. Okay. So. Well, Deidre claims that it's good. Okay. Enough, well, I'll have to, watch enough it, to ignore me for three hours <laughs> on date day. That's wild. <laughs> so get over yourself, Jacqueline. That's all I'm saying. All right. I love you and everything, but don't start talking about something that's important to me like it's bad. Okay. Although it is good 
it that she's she's got with the program. Yeah, you know, that's you right. Have to, you have to give us something to talk about if you don't want to talk about <laughs> that's football. That's right. If y'all, if y'all don't call it, I'm going to talk about football <laughs> every time. Anyway, on that note, um, the episode was great. Not as great as the, uh, you know, 30s and 40s episodes, but, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was still pretty good. Um, I think about Mount Rushmore, obviously Trump shouldn't be on it, obviously. But um, if they were to add another president, um, maybe not in my lifetime, but the first Native American president would be a good president to add. Um, so, yeah, just thoughts on that. Do we have a Native American president? I don't Not think yet. We've had one. They've all been white <laughs> dudes except President Obama, right? No, no, no Native American presidents, as far as I know. We need one to run. Yeah. But we could put James Buchanan up there. You know, he's like the first gay president. People don't know, but he was. <laughs> his boyfriend was his was his vice president, was from Alabama. He's buried I, at Selma. Well now hold on. Abraham Lincoln's on Mount Rushmore. He was a gay president. He wasn't gay. <laughs> he's married and he was a vampire killer. There's there's some interesting <laughs> stuff there. Okay. All right. Maybe so. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Um, I have friends and family in Alberta, and I have sent them all the request to get me that beer um, from that brewery in Alberta. Um, and if I get it, I will definitely send photos and post them on uh, the interweb. Nice. Great. Um, and the last thing about the Trailer Park Boys party on a, on a yacht that just seems wrong. Um, first of all, the Trailer Park Boys are a cultural phenomenon that should not be used by rich people. Um, and I, I know that they are, they are rich people because they have a yacht. So it's, it's a little offensive to have um, the lifestyle portrayed by rich people. Also, is that really the kind of show that, you know, Baptists want to be promoting? Even no, it it's not. <laughs> All right, easy. I do enjoy the show as a Baptist. I do enjoy the show. You I, keep that on the DL, though. I mean, but I don't roll that out during Sunday school. <laughs> right. You know? right. Okay. Yeah. Certainly not. Uh, president of the most conservative <laughs> yeah. Baptist university right. in the nation. Yeah. No, yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> it, you know, as a joke, um, why are they even watching that show in the first place? Even though they, you know, they should. But why are they even watching that show in the first place? Anyways, uh, no more football talk. Love you. Bye. Is Jerry Falwell Baptist? Mm-hmm. He is. Well, uh, Supposed to be. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe. Jamie, fact check me on that. <laughs> oh, wait, we don't have a Jamie. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm Googling it right now. Is Jerry Falwell Baptist? Yes. <sighs> oh, well, this is senior, but I assume junior is Baptist, too. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's, he's probably not in practice. He's just, you know. <laughs> well, you know. We let anybody in the right. I mean, it don't matter. We take all comers. We do. Yeah. That's the beauty of the church. Right. But I think now, we'll is- tell you wrong if you do real quick about anything. But it is just funny that, you know, the president of the most conservative <laughs> yeah. university. Yeah. You know, Baptist school. Yes. Is, you know, he's got the yacht and he's got yeah. the trailer park boys. I'm more offended by the yacht. You know? <laughs> like, I'm serious. It's like, yeah. we need... I'm all for people having all the money in the world, but at some point, you don't need a yacht. Just buy a pontoon boat like the rest of us (laughs) and give the rest of your money away. Right. Right. You don't need a yacht. I mean, again, which trailer park party on a pontoon boat is that's very far on more, brand. Far more in line. Yeah, very than the on brand. Park boys. Yes, <laughs> but I don't remember who posted the picture in our Facebook group. Join up our Facebook group if you can of the trailer with the pontoon boat yeah, as a there porch. There's a pontoon bo- yeah. boat they were using as right. a porch. But yeah. I was like, that's not a bad idea at all. I thought it looked kind of cool. Honestly. Yes, right. <laughs> Especially if you still had it working. Do you just hook up and go to the lake? You ain't gonna be in the trailer. Yeah, you know, it just. Come back it back up, and there's your porch back. Or then, if uh, say you live on a floodplain, sure, and the water starts rising, exactly. You just uh, yeah, you now float away with it. I mean, we all know living in the south, tornadoes are, they'll tear up a trailer park, and some <laughs> winds gonna get under that that porch <laughs> right. slash pontoon boat real quick. You're gonna lose it real quick. You better anchor it down. Porch boat, yeah, porch boat, <laughs> yeah. If we ever, dude, if we ever do, uh get like some kind of studio or recording space we've got to get a porch boat <laughs> i actually it's funny you said i was driving back from thomasville yesterday and i just thought like how hilarious i just started giggling to myself i was like how hilarious it would be for me and tiny to buy a trailer 
and make it into our recording studio. <laughs> yes. It just would be like live from the Earth Oddity <laughs> mobile home. <you> know? yes. <laughs> and we just have a trailer. Hey, that's a step up from a van. We were talking sure. about a old van. <laughs> yeah. But I think we could probably get an old trailer for like five, six thousand dollars. Now we gotta find somewhere to put it. Yeah. It won't fit in my backyard. I've my dad's got a lot of land, but it's also a drive. Oh yeah. <laughs> we don't want to drive all the way okay. there every week. All right. Yeah, I say I could probably find somewhere to put it in Fayette, but I don't want to drive to Fayette. <laughs> well, Ecola is closer than Fayette. Sure, yeah, I know where Ecola is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um He's yeah. got uh he's got ninety eight acres out there. So anyway, just put the call out or anybody who wants to donate us a land and a trailer close here around and a pontoon boat. And a pontoon boat for a porch. <laughs> it uh, don't have to float. Yeah, that need to work. It just needs to be a porch. Yeah. And uh, and also want to pay to get the trailer moved to wherever you're going to donate yes. the trailer and the land to us. We will gladly let you. Yeah. And then we'll turn it into a recording uh, studio. It really helps <laughs> us out if you leave your name on the power bill, too. Uh, yeah, let's say <laughs> central air is a must. <laughs> we can't record with a windy unit blowing, right? No, no. Yeah, that's going to be bad. So we're going to need central air, too. Yes, so we would. We're, I mean, just throwing that out there. Mm-hmm. If you can make that happen for us, it'd be great. It would be you'd be doing your duty. I see it like we're in live streaming the show. It's like all that cheap wood paneling <laughs> in the back and everything. <laughs> you know, I've been waiting my entire adult life for that paneling to make a comeback. <laughs> you know, I know one day it will. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's I still like be, the look of it. Oh, yeah, be like very on brand for us <laughs> and super funny too. Yeah. <laughs> We could have like a fish and a deer head. Yeah, right. <laughs> just make it like Neither a Neither one of us hunt. But, <laughs> right. least, but just because we're from Alabama, we, we got deer right. head. Oh, well, yeah, we can buy one. Yeah. You know, they sell them. You see them like in a thrift market or something. You know, somebody dies and their wife's just like, here, I'll go throw it and go <laughs> sell this down here, donate it or whatever. <laughs> All right, John. We've also got a review. For real? Yes, we do. Our buddy Chris Tipton, he felt sorry for us. Okay. And he left us a review. All right. On an app. Now, he's big time, right? He is. I mean, he's big time. Podcast Addict. Okay. He left a five-star review. Found out about this absolutely hilarious show from That Story Show, and I will be forever grateful. Easily one of my favorites. Get real trustworthy news, not the fake news, from CNN, a.k.a. the Criminal News Network. (laughs) Support them on Patreon. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So... I'm happy for that. Yes, absolutely. Support us on Patreon. Yes, definitely. And speaking of Patreon, I would like to thank all of our patrons, but I would love to thank especially by name those who donate at the 10 or above tier. That's right. They are Mr. Daniel Hedrick, Mr. James White, Mr. Chris Tipton. Thanks for the review, by the way. That's right. Definitely. (laughs) Mr. Derek Reeves, Ms. Sharon Craig, the Dapper Man, maybe rolling through Tuscaloosa next month. Oh, that's right. He said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say so he wanted to come see us. Yeah. I, I don't, the route he's taken <laughs> would seem to not come through Tuscaloosa. If he gets here, we'll have a good time. Yeah. If I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> yeah. I definitely won't be. <laughs> okay. Mr. JD Westfall, Ms. Jackie B, Mr. Todd Glover, Mr. Tyler Bond, Mr. Thomas Williams, Ms. Sherry Heron, Ms. Jane Updegraff, and Mike W. Ooh, A.K.A. Mike, Mick Will. Mick Will. Okay. <laughs> he commented last week. <laughs> okay. He was like, uh, yeah, this is my name. So. <laughs> <laughs> Even better that we've been saying it wrong for like three or four weeks. <laughs> Just keep calling him Mick Will. <laughs> We're like, you're Mick Will now. <laughs> oh, if so- you didn't have a nickname, that's an excellent nickname, though. <laughs> you know? McWheel. All right. Sounds like something you would order with your McDonald's fries. Yeah. That's (laughs) right. Large fries and a McWheel. (laughs) Anyway, we thank y'all so much for donating to our silly little show, allowing us to get equipment, to look at some advertising. And we just really, really appreciate it a lot. That's right. Uh, I don't know about uh, John. I had people in my life tell me that it would never be more than a hobby. Yeah, and it still is primarily as a hobby. Sure, but never thought it would go this far. Thank y'all so 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 much. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I didn't think we would last this long, which is <laughs> why I said yes to begin with. So, uh, still amazed every week that I have to come down here and do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. We appreciate everybody who enjoys the show. 
I don't know why you enjoy it sometimes when I listen back to them, mm-hmm. but I'm glad that you do, you know? Mm-hmm. I've, clearly, episodes 50 through 60 were <laughs> where we were that in our the, wheelhouse. That was the pinnacle. That's right. <laughs> we, I need to go back and listen to all those so I can find out what were we doing yeah. so right back then. Yeah, I mean, we were probably recording in a room with a tile floor. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> like nothing on the walls. Yeah. yeah. Our trailer studio is going to be so much better. It's going to be <laughs> <Yeah>. amazing. <laughs> Until a tornado blows <laughs> away. Right. Like, what if we're recording and there's a tornado that takes us out in the middle of it? That'd be great for the podcast. Uh, I want my wife to say he did do it. He, he died doing what he loved. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that you could put that on me, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, John, you got anything else? No, just thanks for listening, everybody. And tell a friend. I mean, that's that's all we really ask anybody to do. Just tell somebody about it. Somebody, coworker, friend, family member, enemies, anybody you want. Just, just say, hey, check out this podcast. Uh, they talked about something in this episode that you may find interesting. Yeah. If you know somebody that's into lines, then you can talk about, <laughs> you know, how we had a story about lines and cows. And, and how stupid lines are. <laughs> and putting eyeballs on their butt. You know? They're so stupid. The eyeball art was amazing, though. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's much more detailed than I would have done. But, I mean, anyone can look at that cow and, and and think, okay, well, that's not a real eye. Sure. It doesn't have a giant head on its butt. Well, lines are, I mean, they hadn't made it as far as we have. <laughs> they can't even put pants on. You I know? bet a gorilla could tell. Probably. Definitely. <laughs> a gorilla do some sign language on you. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, gorillas, are they're pretty smart. So... Anyways, yeah, just tell a friend about us, and uh, and we appreciate you tuning in every week, or or whatever is the appropriate. You don't really tune in. We just appreciate you downloading and Pushing pressing play. play. Yeah, yeah, right. And not fast forwarding through the football talk because you're a f- <laughs> football hater. You know. Well, you have been listening to Earth Oddity Podcast. No, but we thank you so much for listening to us. No matter where you get us, whether you get us from. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or maybe Podcast Addict. That's right. We're available on them all. Yeah. If you would like to write into the show, we are earthoddity at planetmail.net. If you would like to tweet at us, we are at underscore earthoddity on Twitter. And if you like pictures, we have an amazing guy handling our Instagram page. People brag on him a lot. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Go check it out over uh, underscore Earth Oddity on Instagram. Yeah, follow us for real, y'all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, people are ranting and raving about how good the Instagram <laughs> account is. Don't hear a lot of talk about Twitter. I don't know why, though. It's crazy. <laughs> <No>. Weird. <laughs> and by far the best way to get in touch with us is our handy dandy phone number. What's that phone number, John? That's 662 493 2059. That's 662 493 2059. We hope everyone out there has an excellent week. Earth Oddity for the Fringe Radio Network signing off. Love y'all. Bye. This has been a very odd production. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.